Hey there, welcome back. So yesterday's video, we went through how to take information coming through from your website, like a contact us form or some other kind of form, and then bringing it into Zapier through the email parser. So the notification you normally get in your inbox from when someone fills in a form, and then taking, it, taking the key bits of data from that, bringing it into a Zap, and then setting up an action to send the, the contact uh, an automatic email reply to basically say you're following up and you're going to send them some more information. And then they can even reply to this email to get additional or to submit additional information about their inquiry. That's what we did yesterday. So in this app, we're going to take it another step and we're going to automatically add the person to our email marketing or our email newsletter system. In this case, we're talking about MailChimp. So essentially, this takes the information from the email that the contact us form and then with their permission, because they've ticked a little box in the form that they fill in, it then gets added to MailChimp. And then your MailChimp email newsletter list keeps growing and you can send out more marketing to more people when the time comes. Okay, so let's jump in. So the aim of this app is to make it automatic when a user fills out the contact us form on your website and then they automatically get added to your uh, MailChimp email newsletter list. And this logic you can apply to any kind of email newsletter platform. Uh, MailChimp is the most popular, so I'm, I'm using MailChimp as the example today. And uh, you can see here on the screen, we're looking at our Zapier, at my uh, test account for Zapier. And the in the Contact Us folder that I've created is the automatic reply to contact us on Wix, uh, which, which I created in the video yesterday. And, uh, and takes the, the information that comes through the email using the mail parser, the Zapier mail parser, and then automatically creates an email or a Gmail email uh, to send that new contact to let them know that we've received their message and we're going to get back to them soon with more information. So that was the other video, so check that one out if you haven't already. And now today we're going to go into MailChimp and setting up our own little our own integration so that the, the person's email address and contact details will be added to our MailChimp account as well. And then the next video we're going to have after that will be how to send a, uh, an SMS to the contact as well as a follow-up. So let's jump in then and we'll start by clicking make a zap. And actually before we go into zap here let's look at the website. So the back end of Wix, now you don't need to use Wix, you can use WordPress or any other tool you like or if you're you want to code your own website or whatever, it's up to you. Um, and if you already have a website, hopefully you've already got the contact us form there. And what I've done, I've made a, a little quick edit on our contact form here, the example one, just so that it includes some information uh, giving permission for the, for the contact, giving us permission to save their email and, SM, and, and phone number and use to send them more details via email or SMS. So that's Otherwise, you're, you can get into a little bit of trouble with uh, sort of spam legislation and GDPR if you're not proactively asking for permission to contact them. Now, I'm not an expert in that area. You'll have to do your own sort of research for your own reality. Um, but just as an example, it's, it's good to make sure that they're aware that they're going to get um, some marketing materials. And we're going to filter out those that don't tick this box so we won't send them any emails without their permission as well. So that's how that looks now. We published that in Wix. And then we can check out the site. So this is just our test site and the contact us page. There's the form here. So just while we're here, we may as well do some example, an example. So we'll go John Smith. Yep, we'll use that email. I'll just make it slightly different because we used this one before. And then we have a phone number. Thanks for sending more info. And then we submit. Thanks for submitting, so that's gone through. Okay, so let's jump back to the zap. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, the same as what we did in the previous zap, we're going to set up the mail parser. So let's go to, let's do a search for that mail, Zapier, email parser by Zapier. 
and then we set new email, continue, email parser, and we have this email parser we set up in the yesterday's one. Let's go into let's go into this if you haven't watched yesterday's video, and we'll go we go just go to parser.zapier.com, and it's a separate website where they have the email parser. As you can see here. So you've got mailboxes that you set up and the email parser receives emails into these mailboxes, scans them and then looks for a pattern that you show to look for certain uh, parts of that email and extract data from those parts. So like you'll see what, what we do, the first name, last name, things like that. So we can create a new, we'll create a new mailbox now. This one is the generic contact form mailbox. We're going to create a new one, which is basically going to uh, just be for those for adding those to this Mailchimp, and also for for the SMS that we do tomorrow. So let's go into our email. We can see this one's just come through from Wix, and we can see here checked field, all those details. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to have a few stages. The first is we're going to set up a filter in Gmail to automatically forward emails. We'll forward this one to begin with to that address. And we remove all the parts of the email that are forwarding. And we want it to appear like it would normally appear. So we'll just edit the subject and we'll just get rid of this. So this is how it would normally appear when forwarded into the mail parcel, we want it to appear like the original email. And we click send. And then we go back. We go back to the email parser and the email's arrived here. And so this email is now text-based email. So all the HTML has been stripped away. It's just the text of an email. And that's why you can see these long website addresses, URLs, which have been pulled out into this text-based email, when in reality they would be hidden in a link. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change this email address here so we can keep track and we can remember. So this is this is the, the one that was we used before for the generic one. And I'm going to make this specific for marketing, like that. And then we're going to go through and we're going to select the elements that we want to pull out of this email. So we want to take the first name. We'll leave, we'll make that surname. Email, of course. Phone. We can leave that as checked. And we can take the message as well, just in case we need that. And that's that. So now we save address. Okay, so now we have these two mailboxes. We're going to go back into Gmail and also create a filter for this. And because we need, we need this email that appears in our Gmail account to automatically forward to the mail parser, the email parser. So we're going to create a filter that says any sort of contact new submission, any subject line, let's say. Contact submission, let's see how that appears. So we get all of these. Now we want to only, we only want the ones that include checkbox, checkbox field checked because we don't want to uh, send any email marketing to those that haven't checked that box. So we're also going to add in includes the words checkbox field checked. Let's see if that works. So let's click that. And we've got to add in our new Zapier address. So let's pull that from here. Paste it here, click Next. Proceed. The Zapier email box is going to get the notification email, like so. So let's grab that number there. And in Gmail, 
We then have to paste the confirmation code, click verify, and then now it's working. And we delete this email because it's not, not a real uh, example of the emails that we'll be receiving there, so it can confuse the, the email parser. And then now we go back to the Gmail, and with that search function that we just created, let's click back. This one here, we're going to create a filter and forward to this email account. And I'm also going to add a label contact form marketing. Okay, so we can keep track of that as well. So we'll create that filter. Great, okay, so let's archive all this. Now we go back into our form on our website and let's fill in another example here. Okay. Okay, we submitted another one. So let's have a look in the email. We've got one here. Here's the new submission. Now let's go to the email, the mailbox again, email parser. It's marketing one. Okay, here we go. Let's see if it's working. So it's got most of it right, it's still getting the surname wrong. So we're gonna edit that one again. First name, email, phone, message, save. Okay, and then let's go back to the original one. Oh, this one here. And we're gonna remove this surname. Just put some text there for now, where the surname would be. There we go, and we'll just save that again. So we're not getting the surname anymore, we're just gonna keep it even simpler. We're just gonna stick to first name. Okay, let's do one more test. Submit, check our email. And then we have the emails come through, Kimmy Smith. So let's go to the email parser. Kimmy Smith, yes, okay, getting better, getting better. First name, email, Phone number, checkbox, and message. Not quite right, so let's do one more. There we go, yes. So we have first name, email, phone, message, done. So now that's come through, so let's go back to our zap. So when the mailbox, so we're back in the zap, we've set up the email parser here. We've got to do a check for the different email addresses. This is the one we want. So now it's gonna pull in the data from any new emails that come into this inbox, this mailbox for the email parser. Let's find a recent example so that we can do this. Let's have a look at the data that it's pulled. So let's see if it got Johnny. So you can see here, this is all the information that's come through into Zapier from the, the email parser. And if we scroll down to where it's, where you got the pass information here, you can see some of the details. So the phone number's been pulled in, the message, 
the email, the first name, everything we need. Okay, so then that's going to be available for our next step. So we're going to set up MailChimp and we're going to add a subscriber. We're going to add them to our list for this fake account, terrific test. And the audience list, just the generic list we have. So first is we've got to select the content. So we go back to that first step and we're going to pull in the email address here, pass output email. And then we can leave this blank. We can update the existing. We can replace groups. We can replace and add any other details. So if we had MailChimp set up to also have some other fields like first name or phone number or other details, we could also add them here as well using the same tool for, for the appropriate field. We will keep it simple in this case, we won't do that. We're just going to add their email address. Okay, then we send test. Okay, let, now let's just jump into, yep, there we have it. So we've got two contacts now. We have this one and we've got this new one that we've added in. Okay, great. So now we can turn it on. We first will name the zap. So we'll say contact form submission To email list. Pass uh, to MailChimp. Turn on. And there we have it, all set to go. So I hope that's been useful. Please uh, ask any questions or feel free to share any of your feedback. And I uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video coming up tomorrow. Cheers.